Hey, you guys, and welcome back. Um, yesterday in our homeschool family box, we talked about your attention and what an important commodity that is and how you direct it will um, really inform how you spend your days and how you stay on mission and all of that. Um, so I hope that you tuned into that. If not, it's still available on YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook, all over the place. Yeah. Um, but today, we wanted to move on to an issue that's a little bit more um, sensitive, perhaps. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about, David? Well, we're going to talk about anger today. And this is one of those things that um, uh, it is really important. It actually... Uh, it, it really harms a lot of relationships. It and yeah. um, it's one of those things that can kind of like a seed, it, it gets in there and it just grows and grows and grows if it's not dealt with. And it can cause a lot of damage. And, um, you know, I, I, everybody has been and looked at, uh, I would assume, the uh, verses in Ephesians 5 and 6. You hear it in a lot of marriages. Uh, you hear pastor talking about it during Mother's Day and Father's Day. And if you continue on into Ephesians 6, it talks about the relationship of the kids to the parents. Right. And uh, one of them is um, uh, uh, do not provoke your kids to anger or wrath. And um, one of the things that I always uh, think about when I look at those verses is that, you know, of all the things that Paul could talk about, he seems to just pick one thing. And that really strikes me. Right? I mean, when you go to... Um, Listen to our podcast. Um, we uh, we talk about a lot of different things, right? When you go to one of our events, there's a lot of different things that are talked about. You read a book about parenting, there is like chapters and chapters of stuff. Paul doesn't do that in in, in these sec, verses. Yeah. yeah, in this section, he just picks one thing. And so you got husband. Uh, you know, it, you can look at this as husband above all things, love your wives. And uh, then he also goes into he continues on. Um, and he talks about, do not provoke your kids to anger. So it's like above all else, don't do this. And, okay. So just so we make sure we're on the same page, provoking your children to wrath really truly means exasperating them. Um, it, it can lead to bitterness. It can frustrate them. It's, yeah. it's something that just drives a wedge in your relationship um, it could start small, and just as it gets hammered away at that that chasm, that that ugh, that wedge in your relationship just gets bigger, and it can destroy your relationship. And so, it's so important that you stay on top of this. Absolutely, and I I think that it would be really beneficial to actually expand on this. What kind of things in your life or in your home are going to exasperate your kids or provoke them to anger? What are these things that are going to cause that? And we can kind of go through those and there's no way, hey, we're only planning on talking about this for about 10 minutes. There is no way that we're going to get into every single one, but just like meditate on this for yeah. a little while because well, this is really important stuff. Yeah. And ask the Lord, we'll throw out a few examples just to kind of hopefully broaden your vision of, of the different little things that you may not think of as provoking your children to wrath or to anger um, or to frustration or bitterness or whatever. So I hope that these few examples that we're going to talk about will really get you thinking and really keyed in on some of the things that you may be doing that may factor into to this emotion in your children as well. And it just is so devastating to your relationship with them. Absolutely. So one of the one of them would be injustice, mm. right? I mean, that is a big one, especially right now. Um, everything that's going on, uh, there's a lot of wrath. There's a lot of anger. And it, you can see this everywhere. But um, injustice, if your kids believe that you are not being justified or you are not justified or you are playing favorites, you're not applying the rules um, equally, mm -hmm. Um, they think that you love one of the kids more than them or that you love your job more than them or you love something else more than them, uh, they're going to see this as being unjustified or injustice and it's going to cause wrath to kind of bubble over because they're going to feel like they can't do anything right. And um, so I would say injustice would be a big one. Um, well, and just really quickly to kind of park on that just a yeah. second he noted all that we see going on in the world today and 
um, the conversations that you can have with your children to help them navigate through what they're hearing talked about, what what they're seeing going on, help them get a biblical view of those things and then model it for them. And that comes out not just in social injustice and the things that are being you know, ranted about on social media and in the, the news media, but also it comes out in just those conversations and the way that you teach them to look at people and model for them how you look at them and, and their siblings and so on. So um, just really, really practical there in helping them learn how to deal with injustice externally as well. Absolutely. And so I think a, another one would be uh, a, a treating them like they're an annoyance, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about your kids are a heritage and treating them like they are not a heritage. That's going to manifest. They're, you're going to see anger coming out of your kids because of that. Because if they believe that every single time they come to you that they're an annoyance, uh, if they believe that they are playing second fiddle to something yeah. else, it's going to cause them to be anger. And so you're actually provoking your kids to wrath by treating them like they're an annoyance constantly. The other thing is, in, in, in related to this, is that how you talk about them to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, talking uh, about them to your mom or to your friends, and they hear overhear you talking about them. Or in posting some way. it on social media, which don't even get me started. Yeah, that's that. right. yeah, that, that is a big <laughs> pet peeve for me. Um, but but in that that point of making them feel like an annoyance, how many of you moms and dads too? But I I can speak specific to moms because I know for sure you've seen this. Have seen that hurt in little eyes when you've snapped at them or you've been so involved in something else and you've just kind of shoot them away. Um, that is that is a look that just pains us, but think of what it's doing to them. So um, that those times when we mess up, when we, we do make them feel like an annoyance. And you know, there are times when, when they you don't have time right there. You need to let them lovingly know that you're in the middle of something and you'll get right with them. That's a totally different situation. Um, but when you're just annoyed and so in, involved in something else that you kind of shoo them away, that gives you a great opportunity when you recognize what you've done to go back and apologize and, and to mend that fence and do that really quickly because that's going to go a long way towards not building that wrath, that frustration and exasperation in your child. Absolutely. I mean, there's one, there, there's one level of this where it's a, a decision where you say, hey, I just can't get to this right now. Mm -hmm. And there's another level of this where it is being characterized yeah. by your children being annoyance. So if they see a pattern, they see a habit in you where it is constantly, yeah. they are an annoyance to you, um, that's what is going to provoke them to wrath. If it's every once in a while, hey, I have to take care of this, and you handle it gen you know, gently, you're not going to cause provoking the wrath, but it's that being characterized right. by being an annoyance. Right. And again, let's say another one would be them playing second fiddle, right? Um, if you have a job, let's talk about something that's really difficult right now where you, know, you have pastors out there where the children are always being pushed aside so that the pastor can work in the ministry. At some point, that's going to cause them to... At respond in wrath or anger and so you have to be really careful about that well and it's not just pastors it's uh, uh, it's it's across the board and right now it's weird because so many people are working at home that yeah, aren't used absolutely. to it so we have to really be on guard about this um, because there are boundaries and there's the character that comes with them learning when is appropriate and when isn't so you need to teach all of that but you need to teach it one of the great things about home education is get to help build their character through all of these um, very specific situations they find themselves in. We get to coach them through it. So daddy is working right now. I'll, I'll hang out with you later is a totally different conversation than get out of my office. <laughs> and and let's, let's move on real quick. Yeah. It, it, it's uh, unreasonable goals. So that if your children have a sense of you have put goals in front of them that they can never achieve, it's going to provoke them to wrath. If they feel like they just can't make you happy or not please you, um, it is going to provoke them to wrath. So the one of the ways that you would counteract this would be encouragement. So sometimes it's not necessarily 
the goal that is the problem is you, they constantly feel like they are failing. Yeah. And so they need that encouragement to kind of build them up. So let's say you're uh, um, home education. Let's say that you're teaching algebra to a child that is not real good at algebra at all. It happens. It, it does. It, you need to constantly encourage them and make them feel like that they can do this. And that will counteract some of this. And, you know, one last point connected to this is that I, it doesn't have to be reasonable. And what I mean by that is that your children may fashion these ideas that you have unreasonable goals and you may think that you actually have a completely reasonable goal or you may think that I'm my child is not playing second fiddle I've sat them down I've talked to them I've explained this to them that may not matter because they may see in you that they are playing second fiddle well or it may just that just may be what they believe at the time. It may be an insecurity that they're dealing with. It may be a whole lot of different things. So as mom and dad, we are really, really, um, it's a our great privilege to get to the heart of what's really going on, whether we understand it or not. So would definitely encourage you to spend the time to get to the heart of those matters, listen to their concerns, be gracious, and, and then, um, and then work through those together, whether you think it's reasonable the way they're Absolutely. feeling or not. You have to be sensitive. And in order to be sensitive to something like this that's going on in your child, you have to pay attention to them, which means that you have to be present. Yep. You have to be watching them. Your attention, like yeah, we talked about attention. yesterday. Absolutely. And so this is a very important thing. And so I would encourage you, actually, as, as you guys go throughout the day, think about this idea of anger a little bit more and what am I doing whether I mean to or not that would provoke in my children wrath or anger yeah yep yep so, so we will see you again tomorrow and I, I do hope that that this sparks some thoughts and some conversations in your family um, that maybe you haven't haven't thought about before so we'll see you later Thank bye bye you.